Good morning and welcome to Farm Factor. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom. On today's show, Kyle Bauer visits with Scott Heiberger with the National Farm Medicine Association. Then enjoy this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Next, Dwayne Taves and Robert White with the Renewable Fuels Association talk about the record year they had in 2017. Then it's this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update, and we'll end with Plain Talk featuring Kyle and Dwayne. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome to Farm Factor. Up first today, Kyle Bauer and Scott Heiberger are talking about the National Farm Medicine Association. Hi, I'm visiting with Scott Heiberger. He is with the National Farm Medicine Center. Um, Scott, tell me, what that means and who you are and what you do? National Farm Medicine Center is part of Marshfield Clinic Research Institute. It's in the middle of Wisconsin and we have been looking at uh, safety and health issues and doing research on those uh, issues among the farm population for over 30 years. You know, we recognize that some of the illnesses and injuries that farmers and their employees incur are going to be different than the regular population. Well, and of course, we all want to promote safety, but there's, but there's some interesting data on farm kids that um, might be something that could help other people. Absolutely. Uh, it's already been established through, through research uh, that farm kids tend to be healthier. They tend to have better immune systems. And in particular, uh, of particular interest, I think, is the rates of asthma. That's uh, a condition that's increasing nationwide. But among the farm kids and farm population, um, they actually have lower rates of that and we're digging into why exactly that is and when it kicks in. Um, the, the key is the, the bacteria, the fungi, the, the viruses that uh, kids, especially in the first two years of their life, uh, and in particular on livestock operations, dairy farms, um, they get these uh, bugs, if you will, on their, on their bodies and we all have them, we all start collecting them. And they tend to uh, collect quite a few, quite a variety and this is protecting them from a lot of respiratory illnesses and asthma and we're trying to zero in on when exactly that protectiveness kicks in and which of those bugs is is uh, the key to it and in a real simplistic way if we can find that out we can you know quote bottle it and give it to everybody give it to non-farm kids and, and hopefully uh, lower the rates of asthma and it's it's neat you know we're into farm safety and so we may come across as scolding a lot of times like you know be safe and do this and do that but here's the thing where the farmers and the farm population is is giving us something and showing us um, that you know they've been sitting on this you know for for uh, decades and um, it's great that not only are farmers providing food and fiber uh, now they may be providing you know medicine for the rest of us as well yeah it's an amazing story uh, truly though one one aside uh, just a bit though uh, farm kids though uh, are exposed to a lot more accidents because they're in that same environment that may make them healthier is also a dangerous environment. Yes, you're, you're right. Uh, there's two sides to the coin. Uh, a big part of our work for many years has been child ag safety. Um, if you wrap it up in a nutshell, I think our position is farms are great places to grow up. Farm work uh, gives kids a, a, a lot of uh, benefits. But like you say, um, there are places where it's appropriate for farm kids to be in and not. And what we try to do is challenge some of the traditions. Uh, the traditions of being an extra rider on a tractor, the traditions of doing jobs when they're just uh, too young to do it, operating machinery, being around large animals. Uh, most of the injuries to farm kids occur to kids who are less than 10 years old and who in fact are not working, who are just hanging out. Maybe the parents are keeping an eye on them or they want them nearby so they you know, they know what they're doing or, or they want to start introducing them uh, to this tradition and, and to farm work, but uh, you know you, you've got to do it at an appropriate age. We have resources uh, that can help farm parents decide when their kid is actually able to do a job safely. We're visiting with Scott Heiberger. He's with the National Farm Medicine Center. This is Kyle Bauer reporting. Back to you, Jamie. Thanks, Kyle. Folks, come back after these messages for this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Thank you. 
Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn. For livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population, the farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Hi, I'm Kim Mandarin with Hardy Insurance. I'm here to help you with all of your farm and ranch needs. When it comes to protecting your operation and your family, you need a name you can trust at a price you can afford. Call me today or visit hardyaviationins.com. This segment is brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Soybean Update. This is the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Dr. Kelly Whitehair, a dietitian with Kansas State University, joins us. And Dr. Whitehair, you were part of the Farm Food Tour Dive into Science that recently took place. What was the goal of the tour? Well, the goal of the tour was to help educate both dietitians as well as food bloggers on where our food really comes from. I think they see us as the influencers. We're the ones that kind of go between the food and the consumer, and we're providing all that insight when people have those odd questions about food or those hesitations about where their food comes from. And so they were trying to give us a little bit of behind-the-scenes viewpoint of it all. And really to talk about so many things on addressed how and why the food that we raise is safe. Yes. Very much so. Where did you go as far as the tour stops were concerned? Well, we started in Kansas City at Alanco Animal Health, and we learned a little bit about antibiotics and hormones and some of the research being done there. We then road tripped across the state to the St. Louis area and got to spend a day at Monsanto. Saw tours. Um, we got to speak with a lot of their employees, both researchers, people working on vegetable seeds, dietitians, you name it, we got to talk to them. And then we stopped on our way back at Central Missouri Meat and Sausage and got a tour of their processing facility as well as some tasting of some great products. The discussion that you heard along that trip as well, did it open some of those eyes up of the registered dietitians and online influencers? Yes, very much so. Um, A lot of us grew up on farms, but We weren't the farmers. We weren't the ones actually doing it. So we'd had a little bit of background in it, but it was very different when you start thinking, well, how how is it all done now when it comes to hormones and GMOs and all the things that people are asking us about? I feel like I'm a little bit more educated now and I can answer on a um, more science-based level, I guess. Kansas Soybean Commission, one of the groups that uh, put this tour together, how important is it for groups like Kansas Soybean Commission, Kansas Farm Bureau, and Kansas Pork Association to have tours like this? I think they're amazing. I can't imagine not going on this. I've been lucky enough to go on two separate educational tours with them, and I've learned something each time. I think it's important also because I work with students. So I'm working here at K-State with students, both in the classroom as well as those that live in the dining centers and eat here. And I feel like I can just share my information with them now. So they might say something about a product. I'm like, oh, guess what? That was just raised up the road. And I can talk to them a little bit more on a different level, I guess. And I'm not sure I could do that if it weren't for situations like this, because you can only learn so much off the web and off the news and out of a textbook. So these hands-on experiences are really important. That's Dr. Kelly Whitehair, a dietitian with Kansas State University, who joins us on the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Learn more at kansassoybeans.org. For Kansas Soybeans, I'm Greg Akagi. Hope you enjoyed this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Stay with us after the break for more with Dwayne Taves and Robert White with the Renewable Fuels Association. What if U.S. soybean oil were an industry sensation? If end users started asking for it by name? That future is here, the time is now. To meet customer demands, the Soybean Checkoff is investing in varieties that produce oil with increased functionality. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. What does a brighter, more sustainable future look like in our cities and towns, and how do we get there? When New York needed an alternative fuel source to reduce carbon emissions, the city found what it needed in biodiesel made from U.S. soybean oil. 
All over the country, more and more communities are making the change to biodiesel, made from U.S. soybean oil. And the decision continues, improving the health and welfare for millions of Americans, while adding billions to our national economy. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. This segment brought to you by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. We're back. Now Dwayne and Robert White reflect back on the record year for renewable fuels. Dwayne Tames joining us again on Ag AM in Kansas and an opportunity to catch up with Robert White with the Renewable Fuel Association. Robert, uh, we think about uh, the industry. Uh, we have saw some great gains uh, coming through the summer in terms of use uh, by and, and acceptance by the consumer. Yeah, it's been a great year, a record year. I mean, we have more E15 and more E85 new stations introduced into the marketplace all over the country. Uh, we're seeing so many people see those fuels for the first time. And the great thing, it's at the best value proposition it's ever been. We were just talking earlier about the 17 years of data and pricing information we have at E85prices.com. This is the strongest time frame we've ever experienced in those 17 years. And right now, if you have one of those retailers that's willing to pass along some savings, E85 is the cheapest fuel per mile to drive. What's interesting, uh, personally, I had the opportunity to get uh, some E15 earlier this summer, and, and I looked up at the, at the marquee at, at what the price differential was, and Robert, I know there were a lot of people that disputed what, uh, what kind of value it was uh, to the corn industry, uh, particularly when, when we started talking about ethanol, and they didn't believe those numbers. Well, you can believe it when you look at it in black and white on the marquee at the gas station. Well, you, you get it two different directions. I mean, you're looking at uh, some of the... Uh, price predictions for the corn market, uh, both uh, the ethanol market is also low, historically low as well. We are supporting each other, and the value proposition that the consumers are now seeing will translate into the future. So I think what the farmers, uh, if there are some still that haven't understood the value of ethanol consuming about 40% of the corn crop, uh, I can't imagine the times we'd be in without it. It's interesting times that we are, in fact, uh, exporting some ethanol. That creates some angst on some people's part as well. Well, uh, it looks like a record year. 1.3 billion gallons is a prediction. Uh, probably the third biggest year on record for distillers' grains exports. And we'd love to blend more of it here and or feed more distillers here. But right now, the competition is fighting us tooth and nail, as they always have and always will. And so we're opening those export markets to make sure we can grind more corn. Uh, we're at making sure the distillers' grains has a new homes. Uh, Vietnam just opened back up as an example, third largest market for distillers we've ever had. And so without those export markets, the corn demand would be even less than it is today. We think about uh, the situation of profitability for corn growers, uh, marginal at best right now. If we didn't have those additional options to utilize that product, uh, what pile of corn we might be sitting under today? Well, and these ethanol plants are not what they were even a decade ago. They've diversified. Ethanol might be a co-product instead of the main product now. They're making corn oil. They're making uh, extracting the fiber. They're making renewable diesel, biodiesel, and now even cellulosic ethanol out of the corn fiber from the original ethanol, or excuse me, the original corn kernel. Without these expansions, without these diversifications, the numbers would be much lower than they are today. We need everyone's support, not only for the domestic uh, side of things, whether that's demand at the pump or support in Washington, because we have more capacity we can turn on. We just need a market to do it. Our thanks to Robert White, Renewable Fuels Association, joining us here on Ag AM in Kansas. Jamie, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Dwayne. Come back after the break for this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update. Earlier in my life, I rode bucking horses and rodeos, and my shoulders took such a beating, and that was probably the reason for having several previous surgeries on both shoulders. About a year ago, I decided that I didn't want to have another surgery. 
And so I contacted Kansas Regenerative Medicine, took their treatment process. It was relatively pain-free. Now, after eight months, my shoulders have healed to the point where I think I'm probably 90 to 95 percent of normal. It takes a couple of months to start to see results and feel real progress. That continued to increase gradually until now at approximately eight months. And I'm extremely pleased. I've got full range of motion. I can lift weights, I can throw, I can do uh, a lot of things that uh, I couldn't do without a lot of pain previously. So I'm, I'm tickled to death with the results and I'd recommend this process to anyone. Welcome to our Bar B, 8,000 plus square feet Western store with something for everyone in the family. We have boots, belts, hats, jeans, anything you could want to outfit you and your horse. Come visit our line of saddles. We have 400 plus new and used saddles in stock. We offer tack, grooming supplies, head stalls, breast collars, you name it, we've got it for you and your horse. That's our Bar B, one mile east of Highway 4 on Northeast 39th. Our Bar B, where Western is a way of life. Heinen Brothers, a fourth generation Northeast Kansas farm family, knows how tough farming can be. Farmers helping farmers. Heinen Brothers Ag, selling and servicing crop protection products, fertilizer, anhydrous ammonia, cover crops, quality aerial and ground application. Call today to learn about our extended term financing program, 800-760-4964, heinenbrothersag.com. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways, of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Farm Bureau Update. Efforts to modernize and improve trade through the North American Free Trade Agreement, along with discussions with China, are continuing as U.S. agriculture seeks certainty. Negotiators are meeting this week in Washington, D.C. to discuss NAFTA and American Farm Bureau Federation Senior Director of Congressional Relations Dave Salmonson says negotiators must quickly conclude the talks regarding auto rules before moving on to other issues, including dairy. As is usual with trade negotiations, once the hardest issues get done, some of these other issues can move on and get settled, but they've got to get to it. So they're under some time pressure. Unless an agreement is basically concluded by the end of May, it's hard to see how it will have the amount of time necessary to go through all the processes required so there can be a vote in Congress by the end of this year. Meanwhile, the talks will continue with China next week as China and the U.S. seek a resolution to multiple trade issues which have sparked potential tariffs against U.S. agriculture. A U.S. delegation traveled to China last week and the talks will continue next week in the United States. As a result of that, will we then not have the need for tariffs? Or if the talks aren't all that successful, maybe tariffs and potential retaliation by China against U.S. ag products that may go ahead later this year. So a lot riding on these discussions between the U.S. and China. Farmers and ranchers need market certainty from both efforts, according to Salmonson. What we're looking at is certainty. The whole discussion of tariffs, whether from NAFTA, if that doesn't turn out well, and especially with China, the potential threat of retaliation. So we want trade to be much more certain on a basis where we know we'll have those markets open and farmers can count on that as an outlet for their crops. Michael Clements, Washington. Stay with us. We'll be back after the break with Plain Talk. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. 
based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'll be glad to answer and work with you. Fort Wallace was the fightingest fort in the West. Fossils, Indians, soldiers, scouts, wagons, trails, pioneers, stories. Discover the story of Fort Wallace and the people who served here, the people who fought here, the people who settled here. Wallace County, where the past is present. The new Better Horses Network is worldwide. Presented by Lucas Oil. Featuring worldwide radio and TV with iconic hosts like Al Dunning, Sharon Camarillo, Ernie Rodina, Lindy Birch, and Craig Cameron with American Cowboy, Horse and Rider, Brushy Creek, Cavenders, and Ride TV. Worldwide Radio and TV, the all-new Better Horses Network. Hi, I'm Randy. And I'm Paul from PFI. We would like to personally invite you to stop by PFI, home of Boot Daddies. PFI is America's Western store covering over 50,000 square feet. Over 25,000 boots. Visit Saddle City with the largest selection of saddles and tack anywhere. A huge selection of hats at Vicksburg Hat Company in PFI Town. And choose from the best brands of clothing and accessories for the entire family. PFI, located on Highway 65 at the Battlefield exit in Springfield. And I'm not kidding. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Welcome back. Now let's see what Kyle and Dwayne are up to on Plain Talk. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer with Plain Talk with the Dwayne Taves. Kyle Bauer, your fact or fiction question of the day. There is only one particular cell in the human body visible to the naked eye. Fact or fiction one cell a single cell to the naked eye to the naked eye that's would be naked eye not not not, not, not eye. with your glasses, not with on. glasses on okay i don't have a clue what it is but i'm gonna go true it is true it is uh, the egg from a, a oh, female fallopian egg a uh, fallopian egg yeah egg released how, how i you, don't know how big that you, is you've had reproductive physiology yeah right? but i didn't I don't I, ever remember actually looking at You know, at one eggs. of the most interesting things, well, the most interesting, something I really thought was cool um, when one of the classes was they had the mm, the process for a chicken. What, oh, a it? different yeah, days they, of gestation. Right. What do they call that? Because, like, there must have been 10 eggs inside that chicken. Oh, before they the, came out before of the they chicken. Before they came, I mean, before it came out. I thought you meant out. after it had been fertilized. No, I've no, seen that well, too. yeah, no, it was after it was fertilized, and then, and then, you know, you saw, like, here's an egg this big, and this big, and this big, and then the last two days, they put the shell on. Right. And, in fact, I heard a story about <laughs> somebody that was in, probably in grad school, that he um, operated on a chicken, and was able to place the diamond ring Oh, in the egg. You're kidding me. Sewed the chicken back up. Yeah. Chicken finished the egg and made sure he kept that. I mean, you know, made sure he knew You'd which want to one keep it was. An egg ahead you, and well, egg behind. Well, you could easily <laughs> uh, you could easily candle that and see the oh, and and see well, there the, you go. Yeah. See that the, but still you'd want to keep track. You wouldn't want the chicken running loose. No. <laughs> You <laughs> would be a little concerning as to whether you were successful or not. But anyway, have you never seen that? The re reproductive tract, that's what I'm right. looking for of a chicken. Yeah. It is super cool. I guess right. some people used to, as they would butcher chickens, you know, they they would actually harvest that part and oh. and prepare it in some way. I don't recall exactly mm -hmm. how they prepared it. Yeah, that's not the way we did it. Of course, we did broilers anyway. Like I say, you have to do old laying hands. Yeah, we did, did broilers when I was a kid and... 
Yeah. That wasn't the most fun day, processing broilers. Everybody should process broilers at least once in their life. They'll appreciate the chicken industry a great deal more. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom, and I hope you enjoyed today's show. See you next week on Farm Factor. Closed captioning brought to you by Egg Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at eggpromosource.com.